So uh, good afternoon. So we'll continue with uh, looking at uh, coordinate scaling constraints. We mentioned other constraints yesterday. And again, why do we have these constraints? Because they uh, are used in constructing approximate exchange correlation functionals or if you're approximating the kinetic directly with our orbitals for the kinetic not interacting kinetic and uh, you see functionals such as PBE and scan for instance uh, widely used are based on getting uh, functionals to satisfy exact constraints and again, the exact constraints come about by looking at the definition of a functional. And the object is to uh, you derive the exact constraints and get the functionals to obey the exact constraints. So yesterday, we started then, uh, I showed that for exchange, you have a very simple constraint. You have EX and gamma, this linear lambda gamma EX. And uh, we show that the integral uh, of the density to the four-thirds power satisfies it. Now, what we do today is put down uh, several properties for the correlation energy that are more complicated because the correlation energy has more complicated definition than exchange. It's a more and mighty many body effect there. I'll derive uh, in an outline form uh, a couple of the relationships. So you see how it's derived. So you'll have interest and confidence that, that you go and derive constraints. And you, you see what it's all about. And uh, hopefully uh, these constraints will become meaningful from seeing the derivations. And, uh, there was derivation last time for exchange here, but they're not one form. And uh, they're for correlation and for uh, exchange non-uniform uh, scaling, you'll see an explicit uh, derivation. Okay, so we'll get started. So what we're going to have here is uh, I'm going to start with uh, the example uh, have the right one. So these are examples. that dark enough? Yes? yes. Okay. yes. Right. So this is examples of uniform uh, coordinate scaling constraints for EC. First. And uh, so going to be here, it's uh, the uniform is more complicated than than for EX. So again, let's say we have with n gamma x, y, z is equal to gamma cubed 
and the gamma x, gamma y, gamma z. We have the uh, EC in gamma, of course, is equal to TC, the kinetic part of the correlation uh, in gamma, plus UC and gamma. Right. Where TC and gamma is equal to psi and gamma T psi and gamma minus phi and gamma V E E phi and gamma. And T And uh, what do we know about this uh, for all gamma, uh, TC and gamma? is greater than zero. It's positive. Okay? And then we have, okay, so what is this? Uh, this minimizes, yields the density, what does it minimize? The expectation value of what? Right. So it minimizes and what does this minimize? greater than zero, of course, is this just minimizes the expectation value of t. It's going to be smaller than this expectation value of t, where this is constrained to minimize t plus b max t. Okay. And you see why this minimizes t. This is the cone sham, right? It's a cone sham function. And the cone chair, we have the single particle order for those, and you have an external potential, non-interacting system, and the operator is T, so you minimize T. In the many-body situation, it's T plus B. Okay, we have this. Okay, now, uh, what about uh, uh, B, C, and gamma? That's equal to psi and gamma T, 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 psi and gamma minus psi and gamma T, 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 I, yeah. And uh, what about the sign of this? Well, with the whole correlation energy, which is the sum, is uh, going to be negative, then uh, sum must be negative, then this has to be negative, which this is positive. Okay? We have that. All right, now let's, for completion, put down the operators T. Right, minus one half the sum of i equal one to n, del i squared, 
and uh, VEE is equal to one half the double sum I not, to, not equal to J right? and equal one to N is one over R I minus R J. So here we have EC is the sum of these two and this here. Okay, so uh, let us now right away write down the more a more complicated relationship that EC shows compared to EX. So what we're going to get is the following. We're going to get EC and gamma. Okay. And it's okay. And well, I'm not going to put down what goes here. You get it yourself. But it's going to whether it's going to involve a gamma squared TCN plus gamma VCN. Right? Hey. You all could see this? All right. Now I want you to put down what goes here. Does okay, first of all, why do we have a gamma squared and a gamma? Well, associated the second derivative, right? Yeah. And this is to the minus one power. That's how it comes out. But now, what what should we get? Should we get uh, this sign? Should we get this sign, or should we get this sign? What are we going to put here? What? No, the gamma goes it's from zero to small, not equal. Okay, it has to be small. Okay, tell me why it has to be small. Because I think this uh, has is a negative. Correct. Yes. You've got it. Okay, so we know we know that. EC and gamma must be less than zero. We'll make it less than zero, right? Okay, so if this is the case, right? This has to be less than, right? Because why? Well, I'll make it less than or equal to. Okay, so. Uh, but it, it's really going to be the finite gamma is going to be uh, less. Than. Okay, so this let's go like this. Keep it less. Than. Uh, why do we know that? What happens when gamma goes to infinity? T C is positive, right? And this is negative. Yeah. So that's it. It's not a absolute rigorous derivation. And what's very interesting is there's a, a, a textbook that has this wrong. It's wrong in, in more than one textbook. And one of the textbooks now is an erratum where uh, it, it went from equal sign to <coughs> this. Now, the reason you get an equal sign, you want to put in an equal sign if you're not thinking about things clearly, because you would say, oh, this has a second derivative, this is to the minus one. Well, it's clear. It's simply an equal sign. You just scale away from it, and that's what you get. But it's, it's the, what it is, is the fact, okay, we used kind of plausibility argument here, and it, it, it works fine. But this psi 
minimizes T plus B two operators with two different uh, homogeneities here. And B is just one and comes to show rigorously it comes out that way. But here we use a very reasonably uh, an argument that says that, well, it has to be, it has to be this. Okay. Well, okay, so we have gamma to zero. Okay, so it's less than this. Well, okay, this goes to zero, this goes to zero, right? Yeah, and gamma, this goes to zero, right? We're going to show that later because it goes as minus one. So let's do this. <laughs> okay, all right, yes. We're going to show you to prove it, right? Now, I'm going to prove a few relationships, not to say, hey, these are the most important relationships. The reason I'm proving is to show you how it's done. One way that certain constraints are derived and emphasizing the importance of looking at definition and, and uh, emphasizing that one wants to get the functionals today. This constraint. Anyway, this inequality came about originally from uh, John Perdue and 1985 physical review. It was a follow-up paper I'll talk about tomorrow with Levy Yang and Park, which uh, has bearings in, in the adiabatic connection. But you see, we just looked at definitions, found out that EC has to be negative, this is positive, and we get this result. All right? Sounds pretty good. Yeah? Do we, do we have time to explain? I, I, I missed why, why it's not important. Why is the part? What, why don't we just do what we just did, saying we know how... Um, okay. Okay, what are you saying? Okay, do you see what the argument as gamma goes very high? This goes positive, right? So the point is it can't be equal to it because if it goes positive and dominates, then it violates the fact that EC is negative, right? You see that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, okay. So you see it now. Yeah. All right. So let me go through it again. So you see this. So everybody, see? The question is what do we put here? If we put anything, if we put equal or greater than, if we go like this, equal or greater than, it can't be. Okay? Uh, because this gets positive at high gamma, right? Because, and we know that EC must be negative, right? So therefore, this has to be less than Okay? Thank you. Sound good? Yeah. Raise your hand if you see it. Everybody? Okay, good. All right. So now, okay, now. So that's, that's an example of a powerful inequality. And, uh, sorry, just one thing. Yes. Uh, when, uh, when gamma is small, we, we just uh, assume that since it has to be the same for any value of gamma, it is still uh, uh, the smaller. Yeah, value. yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Because what I did was take the limit as gamma goes to infinity and apply it to all cases. So but the point is you could show that it holds four cases. I took one limit and I said right. Okay? Yeah. So I'm saying it, it isn't absolutely rigorous four cases. It's it's rigorous at high gamma. Right? But I mean but it, but it could be shown. We if we have time later, I will go through it okay. taking expectation. Okay? All right. So I'm saying that we get, well, this is what we get, all right? And, and I can actually plug in the wave functions like I did yesterday to show how you get the But this is what we'll do first. If we have time, we'll do it. Well, we all have time, because I'll do it in the research talk, all right? Okay. So 
this is what we have so far. Okay, so now uh, in addition, what we have is that the other relationships that you could put down. So we also have many different relationships, but consistent with this is that uh, the limit of gamma goes to infinity of EC and gamma is equal to a certain second order energy and that is that is greater than minus infinity. It means it doesn't blow up to become minus infinity. And this, by the way, is not in general a very large number for let's say molecules, etc. It's a second order energy and sometimes uh, the term derived it with Andy Gurley and it's called EC uh, uh, Gurley Levy 2. So it's, uh, uh, it's, it's growing and leaving physical review B 1993 and I also, it's also from myself Physical Review A, 1991. Okay. Okay. Now, as John pointed out in the lecture yesterday, at at small gamma, gamma goes as lambda. It goes scales like exchange at small lambda, and we're going to derive that here right now. So you get a field for another derivation. So we'll say this is at high density, okay? High density. So when we do a high density, it's sort of delta like at points are very high and it could be zero elsewhere, but this point is very high. Low everywhere, and then both moving out at low density. The gamma approaches zero. Uh, e C and gamma goes as minus gamma. And uh, we're going to prove this. This is what John said yesterday, it goes as exchange. Uh, minus gamma, that's not minus gamma, but it's minus infinity, minus gamma. All right? All right, it goes like this, minus gamma. Okay, we've got it now. All right? We finally have it. Okay. So that's where it has to go. It's going crazy. Give me an example of the density. city. An example of a dense city like here, this is dense, is where I grew up, Brooklyn, New York. It's a dense city. <laughs> That's what I grew up. <laughs> okay. so, <laughs> all right. So uh, now, uh, okay, so we're going to start with this. Okay, so we're going to prove. Okay, prove. Here's a proof. So it's another example of a proof. The idea is to show you examples of how things are derived. So we have, we'll start with EC uh, and gamma is less than or equal to okay, uh, gamma squared TCN plus gamma BCN. Start with that. Okay, now let's now take uh, the limit 
gamma mm -hmm. approaches zero of gamma minus one EC and gamma. Right? So we're dividing by gamma. This goes to what? Zero, right? And this so that must be now uh, less this is a UC, I'm sorry. So I, I, I use the same notation as uh, I'm using it's really a U. I got used to VC, but it's a UC. That's what Karen used and I before me and I wanted to keep this. Okay. That's the problem if you follow Karen with anything. So uh, so this is less than or equal to U C N, okay? All right? Okay. Again. Just a fixed end. And what do we know about UCN? What sign does it have? Negative. So let's do that. Okay, we have that. Okay. All right, so that, that's one. All right, do you all see this? We just took this and divided by gamma, and it's less than equal to this, which is less than zero. All right, next you realize. I'm going to write ECN is equal to TCN plus uh, psi N, E, E, e psi N uh, minus UN minus EXN. Okay. We just look at the definitions and then even put it in this form. Right. So we're putting it in that form. So we know that this is positive. Okay, this is positive. Right. So we know that uh, so therefore E C N gamma divided by gamma, or multiplied by gamma minus one here, okay, do this is, is uh, greater than, okay, it's positive, so that's greater than minus uh, gamma minus one U and gamma minus gamma minus one E X and gamma. All right? Yeah? What? No, is there a problem? What's the limit that you're using for gamma? It's like AC, it must be negative two. And then the, the Wait, wait, hold, hold on. You see, this is uh, the limit uh, gamma approaching zero. That's what we're doing in both places, okay? What, what's wrong with this? No, you, you look like, look, look, here. This is positive, this is positive, right? And the two other things is also positive. This is minus, minus. So it's greater than this. This, what do you mean it's positive? This is, this is but it has a negative sign in front of it. Minus u minus e x. If this is positive and I take these away, this is greater than this and this. Yes. Okay? Right? I, I got I got everyone's vote on this, right? Alright? This okay? Good. You see that? Alright? Okay. Oh, what do we know about this? How does this scale? How does this scale? We did it yesterday. It scales as, remember you get a gamma in front, right? Mm -hmm. And you get a gamma in front of this. Okay, so, uh, so I'll, 
Sorry about that. Right. Okay. These are these are gamma. Okay. Thanks. This is a gamma. Gamma minus one. I write a UTL for the gamma. I'm an alpha male. <laughs> Gamma minus one, gamma minus one. All right? Okay? All right, you all? Is it okay now? I have everybody vote? We can move on. Okay. This is election time, as you know, throughout the world. Okay. So I have everybody's vote on this. So this is what we have, right? But we know how this scales, right? We get the gamma out front. We didn't guess it. We get the gamma out front. So that means that over here, we then have the limit as gamma approaches zero, gamma minus one, uh, EC, and gamma is greater than And then the, the two things we had was UN uh, minus UN, the classical, minus EXS. Okay? All right, so we get this greater than minus this, right? We've got gamma minus one. Okay, we must be sure really which N has the less gamma, which one doesn't. This is greater than, so it's greater than minus infinity, right? And you know, this one is which, which way do we uh, This is uh, greater than minus infinity, and uh, here it's less than zero, okay? All right? Less than zero, greater than, is it, you okay? Yeah? Okay. Yes, this is bounded, so it's greater than, okay. So we have, so combine this here, so let's call this A. Okay, this is A. It's less than zero, and this is B. Okay. So we're combining A and B, right? So we have it's greater than minus infinity. So uh, combining A and B, okay? So we can combine A and B. And then we therefore get that uh, the limit of gamma goes to zero, gamma minus one EC and gamma, F was greater than minus infinity and less than zero, right? Yeah? So we have, okay, we derive that. So now, this means, this implies that the result, that EC and gamma goes as minus gamma as gamma approaches zero. Yeah? Correct? I mean, if we had it like it's minus, let's say, A, lambda 
this way, minus a lambda, fine, you know, that's what we're saying. If it's a lambda squared, right, okay, it would be equal to zero, you see, right? Because that's the first term, and the higher, the higher down the terms, it would be equal to zero, all right? If it's gamma, not linear, if it's like to the one-half power, you divide by gamma, and you would get, it would be equal to infinity, not greater than infinity. So it's a linear. It goes linear. That's the point of it, you see? So it goes as gamma, as gamma goes to zero, all right? So any other power of gamma is not possible. Any other power is not possible. So that's, that's it. So that's what comes in. John put that as one of the constraints and felt it's worthwhile to go through the derivation of this constraint from beginning to end. Right? To see what's involved. So again, the big thing is you go and look at the definition and uh, you stick to the definition and you, you go where the definition takes you, okay? All right. Okay, so now, again, I'm, I'm going to, in the research lecture, continue with, with the scaling. Uh, so let's now develop uh, further EC constraints. So do you all see this, how we got the linear behavior? Okay, so if you had any other power that it starts with, it would, it would either go to zero or to minus infinity. Okay? Okay, that's the thing. Alright, so let's let's derive other constraints and let's start start with this here. Okay? Right, we're going to start, well, here we, we have it. Uh, let's, let's, start this. Okay. let's go back to this equation here and get uh, get I would like to derive uh, one further thing with this here. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to use this. This is what we have. Okay. So, we're going to use this now. All right. So, we have that, uh, we have, let's write it this way. This is our starting equation. Zero is equal to minus E C N gamma plus gamma squared T C N. You know, when I start dreaming about these little things, it's kind of attacking me. Okay, gamma squared T C N plus gamma UCN, all right? UCN, okay, we have that, all right? So now, when do we get, when do we get an equal there? It's greater than or equal to, when do we get equal? It's greater than for all gamma except gamma equal what? Zero. No, one. one. EC, at one, EC is equal to EC, right? Okay, so we say that equality at gamma equal one. Equality at gamma equal one. Uh, otherwise, so what? So all right. So minimum at at gamma equal one. All right. We have a minimum at gamma equal one. All right. So what that does gives us is that uh, minus EC N gamma with respect to gamma at gamma equal 1 plus TC plus 2 TC N plus UC N equals to zero, right? It has a minimum at gamma equal one. So that's our first equation here, all right? So let's now 
a race of the word here. Alright, so we have that. Now, uh, you see that? You looking over here? Well, wait a second. It has a minimum at down equal one, right? Otherwise, larger than zero, right? Okay? So the key point, it has a minimum. It's above zero for except gamma equal one, right? So, all right, so we have this here. Seven so has a minimum of gamma equal one. So we have this. Okay, now, but two, what? Two, two gamma is the second gamma. No, it's gamma because then it's gamma equal one. Okay. All right? Good. Okay. So now, okay, now we also say now combining with Okay. Uh, BCN is equal to TCN plus UCN. Right? You have that. And what do you get then if you combine the two? Well, how are you combining? You multiply. You, you just subtract. Uh, you subtract out, right? Yeah. Okay. And what you get is a pain <coughs> TCN equal minus TCN plus the partial of EC N gamma with respect to gamma at gamma equal one. Am I correct with the two of them? Yes? Okay, that's it. So we have that. All right, so this is, and we also get, and what do we know about this? What about the sign of this? Positive. Positive. Okay, so here's another constraint. All right, ECN must be less than, what you get is ECN. is less than the derivative of EC and gamma with respect to gamma. That gamma equal one. And in 1985, John and I just proved with this and he will be able to bank this. So interesting. Okay. Okay, we have that. All right. How about some numbers? Oh, so this is also a way of getting the kinetic, you know, look at what is the kinetic contribution of DC, and you also get DC this way. Let's look at the Karen yesterday has provided us with some numbers. Uh, you did the, which atom did you do? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I have numbers here. Okay. Uh, I <laughs> well, um, oh no, I have it here. By the sheets here, where are the sheets here? Here are the numbers. Okay, so we have it here. What were the numbers yesterday? Do you remember those numbers? Do you have them? Oh, I have them. I have them. I have the numbers. Okay. So we have this here, and let's uh, go through it soon. Uh, Forty-five minutes. Okay. Uh, okay. So I know I can't well, we'll see. Really well, then let's let's just put the numbers up. That's part of the thing. Okay. 
So we get uh, this is uh, zero, right? Greater than uh, TCN is greater than zero, and it's equal to minus ECN plus the partial of EC n gamma. So I the gamma and gamma equal one. Okay. And uh, the number it was for which atom? Uh, neon and atomic units? No. Okay, atomic units, this is for neon atom. And uh, this is turned out to be uh, so with the negative sign, DC is negative, you get 0 0.39. Okay, and remember he said that this is close in magnitude to this, and you get 0 0.33. Okay, but here we're now revealing what the difference is, and the difference is this, of course, that was how here and knew this, of course. So minus 0 0.04, okay? So, okay? This is for the, what? 106. Uh, yeah, okay, well, that's right, okay. Well, but are my numbers correct, Karen? Well, apart from your... Especially upon my error here, my terrible error. Here. Okay, but we're going to reveal something here. Is this this from the exact? Yeah. This is exact. Okay. This is reveal something here. First of all, is this a big reveal? All right. <laughs> you know, we published the paper. John and I. They said, well, "How come you guys are always putting reveal in your article? We reveal this, we reveal that." They said, "You have to stop that." <laughs> okay. So that was the last time I used. Okay. Uh, I'm pointing out something. <laughs> if you happen to be interested, at all interested, I'm pointing out. Okay. So first of all, hey, there was nothing wrong with the derivation, right? TC is positive, as we derived. Okay. The other thing is, DC is probably equal to this, and this is a tightly bound system, and you see that this is a small number, okay? Small, okay? The derivative is small. Now, but negative, okay? So as you're shrinking, all right, you shrink, gamma, you get, uh, Good enough. Uh, now, when you're increasing gamma, and, and, and it, as you increase gamma, it gets more negative. Okay. So, but you see, it, it, it's not too much happens here for a tightly bound system. Now, if you do this with an LDA, you get a much more negative number. Okay. This derivative here. You get a much more negative number. And it's too sensitive LDA with respect to a shrinking. And that's one of the reasons that LDA overbinds. Right. So one of the things that the, the GGA and other improved functional did was cut down on this. Okay? And this is also to cut down on this, one way you cut down on this, you want to get small, is you have your functional uh, go to a constant as as gamma goes to infinity. If it goes to a constant that's not too negative, it goes to a constant, you're you're making it less sensitive. See, see so it, 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 these have been done in, in the function like PBE scan, etc. And lip also obeys that. You see it goes to a constant. So a key it, it a, a key advance has been to make the magnitude of this small. Okay. Now, as Karen also pointed out, if you stretch, stretch TC yesterday, uh, as you stretch TC goes to zero, right? And what happens is this derivative becomes competitive with this. It has to say positive, but it has to be competitive. Okay, look how much we learned by just going through some simple proof. But so hopefully, uh, all you.
people will get into this uh, and enjoy yourself. All right, thank you. Oh, well, no, as gamma becomes large, uh, you, 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 you go to closer, it will get smaller in general. In other words, you, you start off with a density that's scaled, and you, you take this derivative with, with the gamma that's already scaled, and it gets small. Because as gamma goes to infinity, you're going to a constant. And the kind of there's some second order perturbation, so it's not a, it's not usually big. Right, so it's, uh, but look at all we got from just following the definitions, and you have to keep to the definitions, and that's what uh, we got from Holmberg and Cohen. Uh, yeah. Still, I don't know why for NDA, um, this term is. Why it's sensitive? Uh, uh, why for NDA, this last term is the derivation of AC uh, goes more negative. Oh, so why it's... it's for, why is it for well, NDA? Uh, for well, it's I see, but I don't see for Well, first of all, the LDA uh, case, it's based on the, the uniform electric gas, but also at the high density limit for a uniform gas instead of, okay, it, it goes logarithmically. So as it gets denser and denser, it, goes a lot, it doesn't go to a constant. And, and it, if you apply it to a, to a finite gas, you get it a logarithmic, it goes logarithmically rather than to a constant. That's what happens. It's a Gilman uh, put the limit. Okay. Goes as a natural log of gamma. The LDA goes as a natural log of gamma, as gamma goes to infinity. I mean, not terrible, but that's what it goes to. It doesn't go to a constant. Um, I have a question regarding continuation to what she asked right now. So, when I do my calculations, uh, I see that the LDA is giving me uh, lattice constant which is less than the experimental ones. So that means it's overbinding. Yeah, I think okay. that's what you said. Yeah, now. Right, right. And for the GTA, it's overestimating the lattice constants. So in that case, is it uh, can we then deduce that it is uh, underbinding well, for GTA then? Uh, this is term there that you Yeah, said well, I mean, is it, is it, is it is, yeah. overcompensating yeah. too much? Yeah. Well, what it's, yeah. You want to, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's coming from the GTA exchange. That yeah. It's too strongly enhanced to make the system not even think of density not uniform. And that problem goes away when you use either the PBE SOL GTA, which has a smaller grading coefficient, or when you use uh, the meta GTA. Well, that was yeah, because I look at the results we have. Let me, can I leave you with a homework problem? <laughs> homework problem. All right, so this is, uh, this is a good board to use for the homework problem. All right, so let's, uh, okay. it's, due by, it's due by the next time I lecture, which is, on Thursday this year. Uh, All right, so, so now we consider this is a non-uniform scale, okay? There's a five minute thing, and gamma x here, x, y, z equals gamma and gamma x 
void z. All right, that's what it is. Right. Now, use. Okay, so what we have is. Okay, so. Uh, okay, so now we use. We know that psi n. V e e. -E Psi n. This is the cone sham has to be greater than zero. Okay, we know that the motion. That means that e x n plus u n, right, is greater than zero. Right, and then we have e x n. This is another constraint that's used. Is greater than minus u n, correct? Okay. Huh? Okay. What? Doesn't it come from the previous constraint? No, this is the repulse. So that, that was the correlation part. This is the cone sham exchange. Cone sham. This is not correlation. This is deals with exchange. No, no. The, the first was just we deal with the correlation. Okay, so we have this, okay, start with this, okay, so what we have is, okay, use now, we get EX and gamma X is greater than minus U and gamma X, right, okay, all right, yeah? Uh, Show that uh, the limit of u this the this the heart rate, right? The heart rate and gamma x okay, right, is you know that's greater than zero, okay. So show that that limit as gamma goes to infinity, limit as okay, is equal to a constant. Okay. So that the limit so this is just equal to the common to the limit. The limit of bx and gamma x as gamma goes to infinity is greater than, if this is a constant, is greater than minus infinity. It's bound. Okay? That's what you show. But you you use it and don't forget the dummy variables and all the the total you know, the kind of manipulations we did. Yes, and UN, of course, UN equals one half integral n r1, you know, x, use x, y, z, and x, use the x, y, z stuff, and use the square root, you know, here, and the bottom is square root of x, this is, and this is r2, right, r2. But x, x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2, and this is x1, right, square, minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared plus z1 minus z2 squared underneath here. You see, use that form, right? And play with it here, all right? You have fun. And this was in my 1991 paper in Physical Review, I and so forth. All right? Okay? You'll have fun. All right? <laughs> okay. Remember, you do the manipulation like last time. It's going to go on. You're going to enjoy this. Okay. Anyway, that's it. Thank you.